Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Poppy and Bill discover that they are not alone. At the shore house, Bill and Poppy made out in the bedroom and he assured her that they were alone. In the living room, Luna was impressed that it was really RJ's residence. RJ replied that it was her place too because they would be spending a lot of time there in private. Luna was jumpy in the new residence and asked if RJ had heard a noise. He hadn't heard it, but he figured that giving her a tour of the place might make her more comfortable. After Luna and RJ toured the grounds and returned inside, RJ said he saw them spending a lot of time in front of the fire pit. He sensed that a lot of amazing things would happen there commencing that night. They kissed and were delighted to finally be alone with no interruptions. Luna noticed that there was one chamber RJ hadn't shown her yet, and his eyebrows rose in interest. Luna and RJ kissed, but she drew away. He asked what was amiss. Luna couldn't escape the feeling that something was wrong and that she shouldn't be there. RJ tried to get Luna to relax and maintain the mood, but she insisted that something didn't feel right about being there. In the bedroom, Poppy said to look at Bill, but Bill preferred to stare at her. He still couldn't believe he was holding her in his arms after all those years apart. He didn't believe it was arbitrary. He believed she had returned to his life for a reason. Startled by a disturbance, Poppy ran to the door. She murmured that she'd heard voices in the other room and she believed one of the voices was her daughter. Bill highly doubted and in turn made enough to rent that property. Bill contacted Wyatt and discovered that RJ Forrester had rented the residence and had the key. Certain that Luna was there, Poppy hastened to get dressed. At Forrester, Thomas and Steffi arrived after visiting Eric. Sensing his sister's worry, Thomas said Eric would be alright. Although Thomas and Finn had had their differences, Thomas was grateful that Finn had spared Eric's life. She replied that it was a wonderful day for their grandfather, and they needed to celebrate Finn too, even though Finn would say he'd been doing his job. Thomas replied that Eric had seen other doctors and they hadn't given Eric any optimism. Steffi reasoned that it had been an experimental treatment that other physicians might have been leery of. Thomas and Steffi were grateful for Finn's stubbornness and determination. Remarking that Eric was extremely stubborn and determined, Thomas assumed their grandfather would be getting well soon. Steffi replied that Finn didn't want to take credit, but he knew the gift he'd given them. Steffi recalled that she had tremendous faith in Finn and that hadn't made things easier for Rich. Thomas and Steffi were pleased that they persuaded Rich to have faith in Finn too. Thomas said he didn't always agree with his sister's opinions, but she could be fairly persuasive. She replied that she recalled he said that. As Steffi prepared to go see Finn, Thomas asked her to let Finn know how appreciative Thomas was, despite their recent differences. Steffi replied that Finn did the things he did because he was motivated to help. Her husband's desire to make a difference was one of the many things she admired about him. In Finn's office, Lee arrived, beaming about Eric's release from the hospital. She admired Finn for being busy at work saving more lives. Finn replied that Eric's recovery was a joint effort and none of it would be possible without Eric's determination. Lee told her son that he could downplay his role as much as he wanted, but as a doctor, she knew how severe Eric's condition had been. She also knew the lengths Finn had gone to for Eric. Finn replied that he had to do everything within his power because Eric was essential to Steffi. Noting that his mother's support was essential to him, Finn stated that Luna and Poppy could use some of it too. Lee glared. He didn't get why she didn't want a relationship with his aunt, who was so sweet. Indignant, Lee replied that Poppy had perfected her routine so that she could tumble into the arms of a rich man. Finn said it wasn't reasonable of Lee to punish Poppy for the past. Lee claimed that she was just being protective of her family, something Finn should appreciate. Lee claimed to know the kind of person Poppy was, but Finn asked what the past had to do with who Poppy was that day. He said he'd been spending time with Luna and she only had positive things to say about her mother. Lee thanked God that Poppy had kept her lifestyle and appetites concealed from her daughter. Lee insisted that her sister relish the company of rich older men. Refusing to allow Poppy to bring disgrace on the family again, Lee asserted that she'd warned her sister not to go hunting for a sugar daddy in Los Angeles. Later, Finn was alone with Steffi, kissing, and they concurred that it was important to make time for things like that. The topic turned to Eric who'd look fine to Steffi considering. Finn reminded her that there was a way to go and more milestones for Eric to achieve. She said it had been a marvel that Eric was home. The last time she'd been in that house, she'd been saying farewell to Eric, but that day, they'd been welcoming Eric back. Finn replied that Eric, Steffi, and her entire family had made it happen with their prayers and support. 
Steffi said they'd done what they could, but it had been Finn who'd saved Eric, just like Finn had saved her years ago. She flashed back to the instant they'd first met, and Steffi said he'd changed her life. He'd never given up on her. More flashbacks of Steffi and Finn's relationship played, from their engagement to when they'd discovered each other again after he'd been presumed dead. Steffi expressed how appreciative she was for Finn, and she expressed excitement for what was ahead. He replied that they'd changed each other, and she was stuck with him eternally. They embraced. Lee Finnegan's evil side revealed. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say Lee Finnegan, Naomi Matsuda, is a woman on her mission, and she wants her controversial sister Poppy Nozawa to pack her bags and depart town for good. How far will she go to get rid of her own sister? Keep reading for all the details and check out what's coming up next on The Bold and the Beautiful. Lee Finnegan's relationship with her sister Poppy has perplexed the bold and the beautiful viewers since they both arrived in Los Angeles. The two sisters have a significant axe to grind with each other and appear to have been feuding for decades. But Poppy's latest move might push her sister over the brink. The Bold and the Beautiful Spoilers, Poppy Nozawa and Lee Finnegan's War The details are still a bit vague when it comes to Lee and Poppy's conflict on the soap. According to Lee, her sister embarrassed her and slept with a married co-worker of hers and destroyed his marriage and created a scandal at the hospital. But if you ask Poppy, Lee is just envious of her because she gave birth to her daughter Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, and was never able to get pregnant. In fact, she wound up pursuing another route and adopted Dr. Finn, Tanner Novlin. Obviously, there's a lot more to their strained relationship, but that seems to be where a lot of the animosity is coming from. B&B spoilers suggest that Lee Finnegan's beef with her sister only increases when she finds out she is dating Bill Spencer, Don Diamant. We all know at one stage Bill and Lee had a connection for a while. The bold and the beautiful fans were persuaded a romance was brewing between the two. Of all the women in Los Angeles, Lee's former crush is dating Poppy. B&B spoilers, how far will Lee Finnegan go? We are about to see just how petty and calculating Finn's adoptive mother really is. We know anyone who gave Sheila Carter, Kimberlyn Brown, a run for their money should absolutely not be underestimated. Lee's assessment of Luna and Poppy as gold diggers justified? The bold and the beautiful, BNB, spoilers suggest Lee Finnegan's, Naomi Matsuda, assessment of Luna, Lisa Yamada, and Poppy Romy Park, as gold diggers is justified. Both are after the most eligible bachelors in Los Angeles. Read on to learn more. The bold and the beautiful spoilers, Lee Finnegan's harsh judgment. According to the bold and the beautiful spoilers, Lee's severe judgment of Poppy and Luna was revealed. She likens them to gold diggers and trollops. Some fans question if her feelings about them are justified. Luna is intrigued in R.J. Forrester, Joshua Hoffman, while Poppy is reigniting her spark with Bill Spencer, Don Diamant. The bold and the beautiful spoilers, Lee's assessment of Luna and Poppy as gold diggers justified? The user Archangel posted on the SoapCentral.com message boards. Lee did not use the term, trollop, she did not call Luna a gold digger, but she said, like mother, like daughter, accused Luna of setting her sights on RJ the minute she walked in, accused Poppy of being cold and calculating and targeting wealthy men, etc. B&B devotees took to the thread to react to Lee's assessment of the mother and daughter duo. One devotee wrote, Lee is too bitter and too angry, way overboard. Don't really need to see her in this role right now. Another user argued, Lee nearly lost her job BC of Poppy when she was working at some store at the hospital and she had an affair with one of Lee's colleagues, a married man, no less.